My name is Adam, as Ralph was kind to mention. I'm going to talk to you about today uh, about, uh, about drones, and drones are definitely cool. I'm going to talk about, uh, to you about the data, which is not that cool. I'm also going to talk to you about my parents. Uh, they are both engineers, civil and military, and they actually, what they did in the past, actually, actually how it affects present and, and, uh, and the way forward. Uh, the whole, and I'm going to tell you a story in the beginning and maybe then some reflection going forward. Well, the whole story started in 2013. It was four years ago, and at the time, Poland was pretty much the first country globally to enable uh, drone operations, commercial drone operations, with a full framework. So actually flying the drones commercially, not for fun, but actually for enterprise level, uh, operating the drones by the people and insuring them, allowed actually to move into this space. And <coughs> this was exactly the time when uh, I was facing a challenge. A challenge in the industry that's definitely not sexy, which is construction, especially in big industrial construction, let's say, of a highway, that no one is really interested in, unless you're going for vacation. And uh, the thing is that, that there's always some challenges with this big sorts of uh, construction. The projects are running over time, over budget. There are a lot of envir environmental damage. Also, people are dying on the construction sites, everywhere. Even in, this, even in this modern Europe. So this was a challenge. And we were faced with a challenge how to actually make it better. Is there any way? And it was four years ago. There were no blogs. There were no huge industry. There were no bunch of startups, Silicon Valley, doing exactly that. There were no books, no manuals. Only some very old science for 19th century and very cool drones coming into the space. So uh, we started flying drones. We started flying drones four years ago over construction sites, getting some very high quality images. I'm going to go into that, what kind of how to acquire them and how to make it very cool. And uh, we started getting data. Because images themselves, digital images, if and acquired in a proper way, they're very good data. So when we started looking at this data, the data became very very important. We are getting five centimeters accuracy GSD. So this is the smallest part of reality that we could notice four years ago. Just in comparison with Google Maps, you can approximately get the best approximate 30 centimeters accuracy. If you go to the countryside, let's say one or two meters. So you might see a cow or not. <coughs> so we were getting these five centimeters and we found, wow, this is amazing. And this is four years ago, guys. There was not a lot of actually anything in this space. So then we started looking at how we can make it better. Maybe we can align this data we are getting from the field with something, with something else. The data was geospatially aligned. So actually, the image of the bridge was very pretty much in a very precise place in Poland. So maybe we can align with other sources of data, like designs, and actually see two things. If the data is actually giving us any information in terms of progress of the work, because we can measure. Because from the images, the flat images from the drones, we are able actually to achieve 3D models. Very precise 3D models, orthophoto maps, digital train models, everything. So we could measure pretty much how deep is, let's say, pipeline in the trench. How high is the pile of sand? What's the volume of the sand, week by week? This is a quality of the data that wasn't really available before. We moved from a man with a mustache in the field to actual digital data of every piece of sand. Uh, this also gave us a tremendous challenge because uh, this is a lot of data. One kilometer of, uh, uh, of a road construction, highway construction, is approximately 50 gigabytes of data. So if you're talking that you're building 10 kilometers of highway and uh, for 40 weeks, a, 40 weeks a year, for two years, you end up with terabytes of data every week. The increase is incredible. So we figure out that there doesn't need to be a way to make the data available. Because right now, if you want to make this sort of data available, GIS data, you need kind of expensive licenses. I'm guessing not all of you have a GIS license in this room. But all of you have browsers. So we actually, what we did, we wrote software. 
our own software that manages the data in the cloud. JS data, very simple one. Manages the huge chunks of data uh, in the cloud, and you, you just need a browser. You can play it on your PlayStation 4, Xbox, your smart TV, your iPhone. It works. And the, the whole concept was to make the data available across the board. So the site managers in the MUD, people in the HQ, or board members, or financial institutions, they can actually see. They can actually see the work. See how the construction, which costs billions of zlotus or dollars or euros, how it's progressing. If they're adhering to the environmental protection. If everyone on the construction sites are, is wearing hard hat, are the trenches secure? And we did all this. And you know what? Besides all the engineering products, what we got was actually increase in work safety. Actually, the number of accidents on the construction sites, when you monitor them carefully with using drones and all the analytics I mentioned, actually goes down by 90%. On the sites we have monitored, there were no more deaths. People just behave when they're being watched. That's why in London you have a half a million of CCTV cameras, right? So Brits behave. So this, is, this was a story, but the whole idea here was connecting the dots. I'm not an engineer. <coughs> I'm not really an inventor. Which, the thing is that we had a problem. We faced it. We looked what was available before. What's, what's there? What's the, we had the new drones, new venture point to look from above. What other pieces we needed? We needed some cloud. I'm going to be focusing on that. But the coolest part of it is a science called photogrammetry. This is, oh, thank you very much. This is a science actually developed in 19th century, advanced by NASA for moon landing. It actually allows you, if you t do it properly, to actually acquire from flat pictures of the Earth, which is a curve ball, actually to get 3D models, cartometric. Give me an example of Google Maps. Everyone here uses Google Maps or Bing Maps or anything similar. So that's pretty much it. But we do it much more precise. So from flat, you can go for flat images of huge areas. You get cart cartometric, meaning measurable, images of the land. So we can measure in, in three dimensions pretty much everything. And this is simply staggering. Because you don't need a satellite, you don't need a plane with a camera worth $2 million actually to do it. You need $10,000 drone or $5,000 drone or $1,000 drone because the prices are dropping. <coughs> and I mentioned my parents in the beginning because they actually work in the engineering field for many, many years. And they were struggling because they didn't have the tools we have right now, especially in terms of looking at the photogrammetry, data processing. It was always a challenge. In the last four years, the advancement of GPU processing increased so much, so actually processing those huge amounts of data is possible at all. And let me stop for a second. And amazing thing, what happened here was actually, I'm going to use a very cool word in English, convergence of technologies. So actually, one technology might be cool, like drones. Yes, and this is cool. Other technology might be very old. Might be very old, but actually the way to apply it right now, you can apply it in a different way. And it's being done. And I s this is photogrammetry. And this is something, you know, four years ago when we started doing it, there were no books even. First book regarding low altitude photogrammetry using drones actually came out approximately two years ago. So what, there was nothing to refer. Of course, when we started moving into the space since four years, we got into a challenge. Again, the data, too much of it. And uh, of course, we are not expecting machine learning, deep learning, or AI to take over. But actually, machine learning is uh, right now is a tool for us to do something with the data. Uh, I mean, the small things, even identification, classification of the key objects of the construction sites. However boring it may sound, the scale, not even in Europe, globally, the scale of the construction, maintenance of the construction, it's immense. And every one of you here in this room 
makes use of this infrastructure every day, unless you live somewhere far in the forest and you don't really move anywhere. Besides, you do, and you should care. Then there's a cloud. Everyone here uses the cloud, but cloud is not sexy. No one is talking about the cloud anymore because it's old news. But we make use of a cloud in such a way, as I mentioned, I was showing you some cases today that, you know, four inspections, six inspections, we are talking about thousands of terabytes of data. How can you store it without the cloud? Cloud is, you know, so much 2005. We are 2017, it's not that cool. And we forgot about this, you know, the really very recent stuff. And of course, there is this science called engineering. Maybe not the oldest, but one of the oldest professions in the world. And we have to make use of it. That's why I mentioned my parents in the beginning. Because those people have tremendous experience. And actually, what we are doing using drones, advanced image data analytics, getting the data on the cloud, doing the crazy stuff, imagine. If you are a site manager of the construction site of a highway, which is 10 kilometers long by 300 meters, and you're responsible by law and by business to actually know everything that happens everywhere, how can you? There is no way that you actually you're, might be aware of everything that's happening. It's simply not possible, and this allows you to be. So it actually changes the way, in the long term, there was a term re-engineering in the, in the 90s. Most of you doesn't remember that. But basically, the idea here is that we give a new level of data, accessibility, quality, mobility. And putting them all together actually arrive as a, as a new place. The last thing is actually the, let's say, business challenge. So we have to prove that this solution, because making expensive solutions is fairly easy. But uh, we are struggling to make it most, uh, most, most sense of, out of it. And at the end, when you get the convergence of different technologies, and right now we have technologies, concepts, ideas, all of them together here, it's very cool. I'm not saying this is the end. We can add the VR to it, because we have very cool data. We can put in VR. That's another venue. I'm not sure about the you know, business rationale of that, but well, it's cool. Uh, <coughs> in the beginning, we were looking at the construction. And I was sticking to this example because this is very tangible. But actually, when we started working for the last four years, going across the globe, and starting here in Poland, right now we are deployed in 15 countries globally, uh, we started seeing that actually if you get very good data of something in the field using different tools, actually it's applicable across the board. So in agriculture, in insurance, law enforcement, transportation, healthcare, monitoring pollution, any source of data. At the end, it's a source of data. If you have a workflow, it's like we didn't expect all of it. It's actually disappearing all the time. Like we were talking to a construction company, and apparently environmental people came in and say, wow, we can count the birds' nests and the trails of animals. This is important for us because we are paying a lot of money for actually for fines every week. And with this, we can prove that we are taking care of the animals. So this is also, for me, inspiring that we can actually discover every week, and this is true even this week, discover new applications for actually for this tool that we know we started flying in the mud four years ago, and the whole data processing and everything to make it cool. There are a couple of takeaways, I believe, because I'd like to be very precise in those. First of all, we have to be a bit humble. Because I see and I talk to a lot of startups, a lot of companies, very hot, and everyone is trying to invest, invent something. There's a lot of stuff is here. We have to look back a bit, because before we are born, because I was born, because Ralph was born, actually it was a lot of stuff was invented. And sometimes I believe that if we rush so hard forward, we forgot what actually was done. As following that, technology is here. A lot of tech is here. What tech do you expect right now to appear? For me, and I'm guessing most of you are expecting a better battery life, right? This is the, ch the biggest challenge our, tech our civilization face faces right now. 
Because what? Higher internet speed is going to happen. It's, there is improving every month. What else? Better cameras? We have amazing cameras. What do you want better? What's the achievement you, you're waiting for to move forward? We have, we have a lot of stuff here. Third thing, it's not the last thing, is the ideas behind the tech are important. Because tech in itself is cool. But first, ideas talking about business rationale, because end of the day, someone has to pay for it. Additionally, some ideas, in my case, it was getting the data across the board. Because getting this very cool data and sitting in a dark room with 10 guys and, you know, make, we are very happy that we have very good data, it's fun. But actually making this data available to 200 people in one company so people can actually see, everyone can see and have access to the same data really changed the way the company works. Because if you have the time between the, something happening, let's say on the construction site, you have two months. And on the other hand, you get in two days in superb quality, in visual quality, and image data for humans is very powerful. It changes the way people think, work, act. And the last thing. I'm a guy from here. I'm a local boy. I didn't go to Harvard. I grew up here, and uh, all of it, although I, I talk about being humble, it makes me actually very proud because I have no fear of talking to guys in Silicon Valley, in Singapore, in Berlin, Tokyo, it doesn't really matter. The thing is that we invented something here without inventing anything, that we are able actually to go globally. And we can actually talk everywhere and show that we show something more than them. You don't have to grow up in Silicon Valley, you don't have to move to Silicon Valley to be cool or to do something meaningful. You can do it here. That's why it, it fills me with amazing pride that actually we are able to here in a so small Central European country to do something amazing. All right, thank you very much. Go on, take a drink. You're, you've earned it. I'm a local boy, and, you know, I need some yeah. drink. No, no, the, the, beers, the beers are coming tonight. The beers are coming tonight. Who's, who's coming to me wash tonight? <laughs> right. I love his love in my heart, you know. Yes, I got a lot of love. Uh, oh. Yeah, I love. Um, transparency. Transparency is probably the most important thing that we need to keep in mind uh, when we are talking about the relationship that we as individuals have with information. Um, and then there is also the level of transparency that the information that uh, services such as, such as what you're doing uh, are providing. Um, for instance, this idea that you know, the guy uh, with the mustache is actually behaving and he is not smoking, you know, sneaking a fag in behind the, 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 ga the gas uh, cylinders, <coughs> for instance, right? <coughs> um, yeah. But if we add onto that a, a, a layer of uh, what, what uh, Priya was talking about, you know, humans being humans, um, we're kind of, we're careless and lazy. Um, so, can you foresee a situation where all this wonderful information that we are gathering and, uh, and uh, this uh, kind of acting by, by you know, being governed almost by this, by this transparent information by, you know, and our actions being you know, uh, correct because of this information, uh, we are kind of end up in the this, in this space where um, we don't actually think. And then, uh, the, uh, an issue which, which engineers, engineers talk about quite often, um, projecting a few years into the future, and autonomous cars and everything, which we'll be talking about later. Um, you know, if, if I don't have a driver's license, because I haven't, I haven't needed to have one for 10 years, and uh, I'm driving in this drone-monitored you know, autonomous car, and then something happens, and I need to take control. What happens then? <coughs> well, uh, I mentioned re-engineering. Uh, you remember, I remember in the 90s, there was a big fear of computers coming into companies and actually stealing people's jobs. They are now. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was an early <laughs> panic. You know? I, I, see, I would say, I see, I see the same fear. 
first of all, you know, if you've even gathered the data, you're able to analyze the data, and the challenge is right now, everyone is facing the amount of data we are getting. So if you look carefully, you can find a guy in a construction site smoking cigarette on a, sitting on a gas pipe, whatever. You can do this. We found such guys, <laughs> really. <laughs> or but sleeping inside the concrete, uh, crazy stuff you see from the, uh, that's why clarity from above. Uh, but the thing is that even if you have this data, the crucial aspect is you have to act on it or not. And this is the, where the, all the data, image data analytics, whatever you call it, actually transfers into real life. Mm -hmm. Because if you're in charge of a company, let's say organization, I don't know, building something, having crops filled, and you have this data and you don't act, it doesn't matter. Who yeah, so, so it really does come down to individual responsibility, and then it does come down to a question of education, right? Because knowing all the facts, knowing all the facts is not the same as acting on them. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ralph. Thank you, everyone.